Welcome to the Navy's newscast for Monday, February 10th, 2020. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. Notice has been given and the order paper circulated for a sitting of the National Assembly on Wednesday, February 12, 2020, at the National Assembly Chambers at Government Headquarters in St. Kitts. Prime Minister and Minister of National Security, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, will introduce the following bills for first reading and also move their second readings. The Cannabis Bill 2020, which seeks to establish the Medicinal Cannabis Authority in order to provide for the lawful access to medicinal cannabis as an alternative treatment for persons who are suffering from a qualifying medical condition and to provide for a comprehensive licensing scheme to regulate the cultivation, supply, possession, production, and use of medicinal cannabis. The bill also seeks to establish a board with responsibility for the policy, strategic direction, and the governance of the authority. The Drugs Prevention and Abatement of the Misuse and Abuse of Drugs Amendment Bill 2020, which seeks to update the law even further, resulting in it being a ticketable offense for possession of up to 56 grams of cannabis or up to 15 grams of cannabis resin. Currently, the possession of 15 grams or less of cannabis or 5 grams or less of cannabis resin is a ticketable offense. An amendment that was written into the parent bill by the government and passed by the Honorable House on July 31, 2019. The Liquor License Amendment Bill 2020, which intends to establish additional special sittings of the Magistrates' Court for the purpose of receiving and considering liquor license applications and also issuing and renewing liquor licenses. This move is intended to reduce the backlog of applications for liquor licenses, which heretofore received consideration only one day a year. Meantime, at Wednesday's sitting of the National Assembly, Attorney General the Honorable Vincent Byron will also move the second reading of the Criminal Records Rehabilitation of Offenders Amendment Bill 2019, dealing with the expungement of records for possession of small amounts of marijuana. The government is seeking to expunge criminal records for those who were convicted under Section 6B of the Drugs Prevention and Abatement of the Misuse and Abuse of Drugs Act or convicted of an offense or offenses involving the drug cannabis or cannabis resin in a quantity of 15 grams or less. The new legislation takes into account unanimous recommendations of the National Marijuana Commission, which began its work on October 5, 2017, and presented its report to the Office of the Prime Minister on January 10, 2019. Cabinet accepted the Commission's recommendations, and a board-based cannabis core committee of experts chaired by Dr. Wycliffe Baird was formed to further advise the government on the regulation and the decriminalization of cannabis in the Federation. The National Assembly will be carried live on ZIZ Radio and participating radio stations. It can also be viewed live on TV Channel 5 in St. Kitts and Channel 98 in Nevis or via live stream at www.zizonline.com. Copies of the bills can be found on the website of the St. Kitts and the Nevis Information Service, sknis.kn. Sixteen persons who recently retired from the public service were recognized for their years of service to nation building at an awards ceremony and cocktail hosted by the Ministry of Education, Library Services and Information Technology on Saturday, February 8th. Permanent Secretary Kevin Barrett gave the welcome remarks, noting that the event was an occasion to show gratitude, love and respect to the honorees. This group of people through their varied areas of service. They have carefully crafted, they have spent long hours in molding and shaping, sometimes out of children where no one else saw possibility. But they have helped in making possible every conceivable profession across Nevis today. This distinguished group of individuals has intelligently and skillfully finessed and unraveled the combination to the true potential of thousands of youngsters, often through the most delicate of methods and sometimes through firmness and bronze, yet always, always through love and care. The honorees were Merle Brooks, Meryl Carbon, Carmelita Lee, 
Viva Maloney, Erlene Maynard, Gail Mills, Eileen Mills, Jackie Mitchell, Cleveland Williams, Palsy Wilkin, as well as Lonit Quilly Connor, Stoddard Daniel, Sheila Drew, Tracy Maloney, Pamela Pemberton, and Judy Paris Rollins. There are many persons here who would have had a big impact on, on me and on so many of the other um, people coming up here on the island of Nevis. And somebody once said that a small thank you goes a very, very long way. So we here in the Ministry of Education thought that it would be very important that when persons have worked hard and they have contributed, and education is one of those places where you really contribute to bringing the future along, to teaching our children, to raising our children, and to making generation after generation into the people who they are. So it is important that we say a thank you to all of you. Junior Minister of Education, the Honorable Troy Liebert, as well as Premier and the Substantive Minister of Education, the Honorable Mark Brantley, presented tokens to the honorees. I am grateful to be here on this day, at this time, at this inaugural ceremony, to make a commitment that we ought to do this every year. And so we'll have to find the resources somehow. But it is important that we say to all of our people that you matter, that your contribution matters. Many of you who are sitting here tonight can point to many of us that you would have helped, that you never gave up on. When other people say that boy is slow or that girl can't learn, you persevered. And because of that perseverance, Nevis is a much better island and the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis is a much better country. Erlene Maynard, a former principal and a director of the School Meals Program, responded on behalf of the honorees. We are grateful that we are given our flowers while we still can smell them. Too many persons retire unceremoniously. Therefore, this expression of gratitude is a step in the right direction. Finally, retirees, as we continue our journey, remember, we have retired, not expired. <laughs> Let us all find new passions and possibilities, because there is life after retirement. May God give us all good health as we continue to build Nevis because I still think that I am still a work in progress and I can still serve my nation and my young people in some shape or form. And I trust all of you have that feeling as well. The ceremony also included tributes to the honorees from the Shekinah Dancer Theatre and musician Abigail Kishel Herbert. Still to come, CDC says a cruise of passengers tested negative for a novel coronavirus. The details after this break. Make no excuse. Claim those fitness goals with a little help from courts. Save big on home fitness equipment when you shop with up to 15% off. Plus, get a chance to win a free spin bike. Shop today and pay nothing until March with Quartz Ready Finance. Make no excuses. Shop and win. Only at Quartz. Bringing value home. Conditions apply. Welcome back. The following is a press release issued by the Federal Ministry of Health. An announcement was made late Saturday night, February 8th, by Phil Murphy, Governor of the State of New Jersey, USA, that testing by the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, confirmed that the passengers on board Royal Caribbean Cruise Line's Anthem of the Seas did not have the new coronavirus illness. 
This confirmation debunks a social media postings over the past few days that the cruise liner which docked in New Jersey on Friday, February 7th, after a 12-day Caribbean cruise whose itinerary included St. Kitts and Nevis, had on board a dozen passengers with the novel coronavirus. The Federal Ministry of Health wishes to advise the public that Anthem of the Seas visited St. Kitts and Nevis on Monday, February 3rd, as the final leg of its five-port cruise, which also included stops in Puerto Rico, St. Martin, Antigua, and St. Lucia. By the time the vessel docked in New Jersey on Friday, February 7th, some 27 passengers who were Chinese nationals were subjected to exit screening by the CDC and local health officials. Four of these passengers were admitted to University Hospital in Newark, New Jersey for further testing. These tests were all negative for the novel coronavirus. This means that no one on board this particular anthem of the sea's voyage is known to have the new coronavirus. The ministry further advises that it was also on February 7th that Cruise Lines International Association confirmed that Royal Caribbean Cruise Line and all Cruise Line members have strengthened the pre-boarding screening of all cruise vessels. The association assured the public that passengers and crew who have traveled from ports in China, Hong Kong and Macau within 14 days would be barred from cruise ships. The press release says the Federal Ministry of Health continues to monitor ports of entry in St. Kitts and Nevis in order to reduce the health risk to our citizens and residents. The ministry remains in close communication with the Caribbean Public Health Agency, COPA, and other regional and international partners. The public will be updated on the new coronavirus outbreak as often as may be required. The following is an advisory from the Nevis Electricity Company Limited NEVLEC regarding scheduled power outages for February 11th and 13th. NEVLEC wishes to advise customers from Rollins to Stony Hill, including hard times, that there will be an outage on Tuesday, February 11th, 2020, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is to facilitate the relocation of high voltage conductors in hard times and a transformer in Stony Hill. Neblack will also take this opportunity to complete the tree trimming in the aforementioned areas. Meantime, Neblack also wishes to advise customers from Eden Brown to Liberty Hill via Butler's that there will be an outage on Thursday, February 13, 2020 from 9 to 11 a.m. This is to facilitate maintenance work to the high voltage lines in Maddens. Neblack wishes to apologize to his customers for any inconvenience caused due to these interruptions. That's it for this edition of the Navy Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, thank you for viewing.